folks, welcome to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. I'm tickled to death that you joined us today. We're going to talk about the number one killer of beef cattle in the United States bovine respiratory disease. And we're going to talk about how to treat cattle with bovine respiratory disease with Dr. Mike Apley from right here at Kansas State University. Stay tuned. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers. Doc Talk, brought to you by Brown Chevrolet Buick. In Wamego, just a short drive down the Yellow Brick Road. Well, Mike, welcome to the show. Thanks. Folks, this is Dr. Mike Apley. He's a friend and colleague here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. You know, we've done some things on the road with our cowboy college and, and do a lot of work uh, directly with feedlots, uh, d directly with our veterinarians and, and, and our vet students. And BRD is one of those things that has kind of been one of the things we've worked with a lot. Main staple, yeah. Yeah. So we talk about bovine respiratory disease in beef cattle. You know, the big thing that, that the first thing we have to do is identify sick cattle out in the pen. And what are some of the things that you kind of coach on for picking up one that's not doing right? Well, one of the things I encourage people to do is you know, we need a protocol anymore. I think the days of not having written plans are really behind us. And it makes some people squirm, but it forces us to plan and really think about it. And I encourage people to write down what they're looking for, especially for training the next generation or new help. And they may even use a scoring system. Sometimes we use a zero to four where zeros hey, there's nothing wrong with this calf, four is it can't get up, and then we might argue a little bit about one, two, or three in the middle, but that's a training tool because by arguing about how ill the animal really is or depressed, that forces us to talk about what we're seeing and then train and interchange about that. So we call it a case definition in veterinary medicine about which ones we'll actually treat, and it shouldn't be all of them in a pin situation, obviously. We're going to uh, you know, unless we're applying treatment for control on arrival or something, but we're going in to pick out certain animals and let's talk about the criteria that we're going to do, depression, how they move, and then we'll have secondary criteria when we get to the shoot, and that includes maybe temperature or listening to them or uh, a variety of different things, but that's our main, those two things put together. And so when we talk about uh out in the pen. Let's let's do our primary and then let's go through our secondary. But let's get out in the pen, you know, the old dart yeah. uh, protocol is pretty hard to beat, but what are some of the things that you're having cowboys, pen riders, farmer feeders look for in identifying a calf that's sick? Sometimes you got to adjust your dial on the way those cattle are behaving. Mm -hmm. You know, ones that are a little wilder might not allow you to see the illness as quick or as much, and so you have to be a little little more tuned into them. Uh, basically depression, hanging out from the others. It really draws my eye when I go up to a group of calves and everyone moves away except one or two or some are slower. So really heavily on uh, depression, uh, how well they're eating. I'll sure let a sunken flank make me look over a calf, but I won't let a full belly talk me out of pulling one if I think they're right. really sick. Respiration rate, yeah. Uh, depends on the time of the day, as all our listeners would know, on how you how you evaluate that. But it's one that really stands out as different from the others, and the way they present to you may change in uh, in the way they do that as they become more used to you and more comfortable with you, and are not viewing you as a predator or a threat to him. So, really standing out from others is one way. Yeah, we're going to take a break, but the the big thing you know is is cattle are kind of like people. You have people that have a hangnail and they miss work for two weeks, yep. and and you got people that come to work every day with, with the Ebola virus and blood coming out of their eyes and, and cattle that get sick can you can some of them you can identify real easy and some of them blend in and won't let you won't let their right. guard down. But when we come back, we're gonna talk more with Dr. Apley about bovine respiratory disease, how to pick out those cattle and how to treat them. You're watching Doc Talk and we're sure glad you joined us. 
This hog is Hanover hoof for meal made from U.S. soybeans. Now, one hog isn't that impressive, but suppose we add another, and another, and another. Before long, you've got billions of hungry customers around the world all clamoring for the same thing. Our soybeans. Learn more about the billion-dollar appetite of animal agriculture at beyondtheelevator.com. Brought to you by America's Soybean Farmers and their checkoff. Tall Grass Commodities offers producers bulk commodities at a reasonable price with reliable service throughout the whole Midwest. To find out more about Tall Grass Commodities, visit tallgrass.us or call 785-494-8484. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. Doc Talk, brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey, folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. We're back with. One of our regular guests, Dr. Mike Gapley, and we're always tickled to death to have him break free from his busy schedule to come talk to us. Generally, it's about antibiotics or feedlot uh, operations, and every once in a while we might let you talk about a pig, but hmm. not, uh, not today. Not today. Today we're going to talk about bovine respiratory disease, and we've got the calf, found the sick one out in the pen, and now we've got them to shoot, and you know, you have a secondary criteria that the doctors or, or cattle feeders are going to look at, and let's go through those. Well, and we've, I'd say we found one in the pen might be sick, you know, and right. that's, the, that's the attitude we want to have to come in. Now, some places will say if they come out of the pen, they're going to get treated. I prefer to apply some secondary criteria. And, uh, we can use temperature, rectal temperature, and one of the things to do is make sure you got a decent thermometer that's actually reading right. And uh, we sometimes we use water baths along with a calibrated thermometer, which may be beyond some of our uh, producers walk, watching to do that. But a good, high-quality thermometer. Invest in a good thermometer. And our normal uh, rectal temp is 101.5 to 103.5 in these feeder cattle. Most of the time, and of course, yeah, hot afternoon, it's going to be higher. And, uh, but you yeah, usually use at least a 103.5 to 104 cutoff. Yep. And yeah, there's going to be some exceptions to that, but if we just make a lot of exceptions, sometimes we end up treating a bunch that don't need to be treated. Another way that people are looking at is listening to the lungs and seeing. Yeah, when you said it earlier, we're going to listen to the cattle. I was like, listen to them, talk to them. Yeah. <laughs> Hear yeah, those little that's, voices. That's only late at night. <laughs> uh, so. It, it's called auscultation, but listening yep. to their lungs and seeing if there's uh, some sounds there that would direct us one way or the other with them. So there's some secondary criteria to apply in the shoot. You put that together with the fact they came out of the pen, and now you make the decision to treat or not treat. Right. And and sometimes you can adjust. You know, I see some veterinarians adjust their treatment protocol based on primary and secondary criteria. Um, you know, I, I just, if one's sick, I, I have a, pretty much a criteria that this is what they're going to get just trying to simplify things but once you've made that decision you know we've we've looked in the pen we've identified the sick calves we've brought them up we've confirmed that the poll was was running a, a high fever and the lungs don't sound very you know we don't have good lung sounds you know what are, we we've got to make a choice on an antibiotic mm -hmm. And uh, you know we've got about a minute until we go to the break. So <laughs> if we need to, we can go into the next segment and talk about this as well. But when it gets down to antibiotics, what are some of the big things you're thinking about? I'm thinking about probably giving it to him just once. And then I'm, the big thing that's in my mind when I give an antibiotic is, when am I going to decide whether this animal's responded or not? After I've given this antibiotic, what's the period I'm going to allow for recovery? And then. And then I'll have a plan for yes, no on that. But that's the main thing in my brain. All right. So, you know, I've, I've read your myths. So is there any uh, good combination of antibiotics? No. Right. <laughs> yeah, I just give thing. one. Yeah. Give one, just give one antibiotic and give it at the higher dose once rather than the lower doses consecutive yeah, days. And, and then I go for the antibiotics that are single administration, you know, which is the majority of them we have now for respiratory disease. Well, we're going to have to pick this up. Well, let's take so. a break and we'll come back. We're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit more about antibiotics and then we'll jump into some of the ancillary therapies, which might be an even shorter conversation with the good Dr. Apley. Thanks for joining us. See you here in a minute. 
Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamigo, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamigo. We're awesome. Turn to a central national bank ag professional. You'll be in good company. They'll help you track expense lines, manage variable input costs, assess ground agreements, pick a crop protection plan. These times demand ag professionals. Central National Bank. You could profit from what they know. Ag operations run better on Central Time. Central National Bank. Money for life. Member FDIC in your hometown since 1884. This tip brought to you by Batril 100 Enrofloxacin Injectable. The only Enrofloxacin labeled for single-dose administration in cattle is also the only Enrofloxacin labeled for control of BRD in high-risk cattle. Batril 100, right the first time, whether it's controlling BRD in high-risk cattle or treating BRD. Today we're going to talk about taking care of your syringe and cleaning it after you get done. First thing you want to do is take the syringe and clean the outside with warm soapy water, get all the manure and, and different things off of the syringe. Then you're going to take the syringe apart to clean the inside. On the inside of the syringe, never use soap. Only use warm water to rinse that inside of the syringe out. We're going to let the syringe dry and after it dries, we want to put it in a dust free environment. One of the best places, put it in a Ziploc bag and then put it in your freezer. But before you use the syringe for the next time, Make sure that you allow that syringe to warm up to room temperature. Soil is the life of a farm, and for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine is a leader in food animal research and education. Our researchers are constantly expanding the knowledge of animal health and food safety. Through the Veterinary Health Center and the Kansas State Veterinary Diagnostic Lab, we provide practical services for animal producers. Home of the Beef Cattle Institute, the college is committed to animal welfare training and research. The Kansas State University College of Veterinary Medicine, knowledge and service for the future of animal production. Doc Talk, brought to you by the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Mike Apley, who is a veterinarian who specializes in feedlot medicine. He specializes in clinical pharmacology. And Mike, I'm just going to bolt list some things. Okay, <laughs> we can do that. And, uh, the first one is, is, you know, I've heard people you want to use combination therapies, uh, two antibiotics versus one. If, if one's good, three's better. And what's your yeah. thoughts? Two issues with that. Well, several, actually more right. than two. One is, you know, can we justify the added cost and the added injection sites, et cetera? Two is, is there anything at least publicly available I can access which would suggest that this improves response to therapy and there just isn't. Uh, so I know we can increase costs, we can complicate things. I don't have evidence that increases efficacy. And uh, the fourth is, if you pick the wrong combination, you can inactivate some of those. So for example, the beta-lactams, which include penicillins like penicillin G, cephalosporins, cephalosporins like ceftiafur, which we have three versions of, those work with the cell wall dividing. So the cell wall has to be clicking along and dividing. So for example, when we have strep throat, those things are dividing every 20 minutes. So they're having to build new cell walls and 
those are like slipping a fake brick in there and they get built and they just crumble so they die. But if you put in a drug that slows down the growth, like a tetracycline, then those can't work as well because it isn't growing as fast. So sometimes putting two things together isn't. Yeah, and you've even shown me some of the papers in, in, in some of the pediatric uh, pneumonia cases where we have decreased treatment response when we use combinations versus using the drugs individually. Yeah. And you avoid all that by picking one drug. And uh, the other thing is thinking you have to put something with it to get quicker action. And that's just not true either. So many of these things are peak concentration by three to six hours. And when it's a six hour peak concentration by three, it's really close to it because it's a big gradual arc. Let's, so, How about uh, IV versus sub-Q? Intravenous injection, vein yeah. in it? Vein in it. Turn get it in there quick. Yeah, anymore, that's kind of more for show, I think. It, our drugs we have today, even though they're single injection, they get to a pretty rapid concentration gradient. They get pretty quick. So. so, and then the other one is single versus multiple treatments of yeah. an antibody. I really like the single injection and ones. The, and the example is, is, you know, given Let's just use Batril as an example. One big dose of Batril, the, the 6 ml per 100 one day versus 3 cc's per 100 three days in a row. Right, right. And you know, we learned something years ago, and back then it was the long acting oxytetracycline against daily injections. And so they'd get a total of nine milligrams per pound once with the single injection of the long acting over three days, or they got five milligrams per pound every day for three days. So they got a total of 15 split up daily, and the nine milligrams once beat the 15, giving it every day. And yeah. part of that's just quit messing with them, give them the single injection. Let I always cover. say if you have the, if, which one would you rather have? Go into the doctor's office three days in a row for a treatment or get one dose? Mm -hmm. We gotta take a break. When we come back, we're gonna wrap up with BRD with Dr. Mike Apley. We're gonna talk about ancillary therapy and some of the things on recovery. You're watching Doc Talk and we're sure glad you joined us. Car Waters has what you need for all seasons for around the farm and home. Working, hunting, growing, feeding, snow removal, even fun for the kids, and a service department with experienced techs to help keep your equipment in top running condition. Tarwaters has a huge selection and the best prices. Tarwater Farm and Home, family owned and operated since 1978. They have what you need. Meet the Veterinarian, brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence, choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Dr. Gordon Hazard from West Point, Mississippi is a legend in the cattle business. A veterinarian for 64 years and a cattleman for 79, Dr. Hazard received the Mississippi Cattleman of the Year Award in 1990 and was inducted into the Mississippi Cattlemen's Hall of Fame in 2012. Also known as the Guru of Grass, Dr. Hazard has authored a widely acclaimed book, Thoughts and Advice from an Old Cattleman. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We are having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. The Kansas Sweet Innovation Center in Manhattan is rediscovering ways to get improved varieties and new genetics in the hands of farmers faster. Grower-led and checkoff-funded research initiatives are bringing about positive change. This grassroots leadership provides a strong voice in Topeka and Washington, D.C. Now is the time to partner with Kansas Wheat in moving wheat forward. Kansas Wheat Commission and Kansas Association of Wheat Growers, farmers investing in their future and yours. Log on to rediscoverwheat.org. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from K-State. Are you BQA certified? Well, if not, you should be. If you work with beef cattle in any aspect, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, or if you work in an auction market, if you're a 4-H or an FFA member, or if you're ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and become familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it serves as a cornerstone of education to help producers identify management processes that can be improved. 
Not only have those that are involved with the beef industry embraced BQA because it's the right thing to do, they have also gained through increased profitability. Traditionally, BQA training is offered face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, and it still is. But today, you can also have this educational opportunity, which can be obtained through the Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Berenger Engelheim Vet Medica. Go to the website, bivi-bqa.com, where you can register and become BQA certified at no cost to you between now and October 31st. Also, if you register and become certified between now and October 31st, you can also be entered into a drawing to win some great prizes, including a tailgate package valued at $500. It's a great program. It's been around for almost three decades. It's a cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. Valley Vet Supply. This segment is brought to you by Tarwater Farm and Home. Come on by, we'll treat you like family. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Mike Apley here at Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine talking about BRD treatment. And we kind of hammered on work with your veterinarian, identify cattle early, set up criteria on when you're going to treat them, one antibiotic, single dose, sub-Q, and then we get to the question, what else do we give them? Time. Time's a good answer. <laughs> so, uh, but that is, that did remind me of one thing, okay. uh, uh, the post-treatment interval, when you give that okay. single injection, yep. you've really got to have a plan for how long it's going to be until you say, are they better or do they need another treatment? And uh, the data is starting to look like that week to 10 days is pretty much the magical spot. And that's what, you know, when I was in practice and, and still do some consulting, our treatment interval from first treatment to an animal that is going to need a second one is 11 to 14 days on average. And that's looking at millions of cattle, yeah. you know. And, and so when you're looking at that 7 to 10, even regardless of a 48-hour, you know, the ones I treat day one, day three, day five, I don't buy a big bag of feed for those. No. Yeah. Those are checking you out. You can tell the, where they are, yeah. So good treatment interval, yeah. 7 to 10 days, depending on the, the types of drugs of when we're going to reevaluate. But ha do it consistently. Yeah. So back to your original question. Yeah. That's, what else are we going to yeah. use? And I still struggle for any evidence. Every year, you know, we talk about thinking about this fall and what's going to happen. I'm still struggling for evidence that putting anything with that antibiotic helps us. Helps us in long-term recovery and uh, getting that calf back to being a productive animal. And so let's, I mean, we're talking about B vitamins. And folks, we're talking about, when we say ancillary therapy, it's a, we're going to give the calf an antibiotic but we're also maybe going to treat them with something else at that point in time. And I'm with you. I haven't seen anything yet that says that, that treating with, whether it's B vitamins, uh, IBR vaccination, uh, vitamin C, uh, banamine or flunixin megalamine, uh, what else, dexamethasone? Yeah, dexamethasone especially there. I think there's pretty clear evidence we can do some harm with that one. Uh, definitely some harm besides just not making a, a an initial an outcome difference and because of the immunosuppressive actions yeah yeah it, and as a matter of fact dexamethasone in cattle is used as a research model to shut down their white cell function so well i think the big thing is and we've got to wrap up but closing comments brd it's pretty straightforward case definition do it consistently so you ha can have some records you can evaluate pick one antibiotic get with it Work with your vet. Work with your vet. Yeah. Well, thanks for being here. You bet. It's always great to have Dr. Mike Appley from Kansas State University's College of Veterinary Medicine. And thank you for watching Doc Talk. Remember, always work with your local veterinarian. And if you want to f find out more about what we do at K-State, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I appreciate all that you do, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress, powered by Kansas farmers.